Oh, guys, I think we might have a silver. Oh, that definitely looks silver, guys. All right, there it is. Let's see what the year is gonna be, guys. Three, two, one. 1980? That doesn't make sense. Are you kidding me? This is not silver? This is the moment of truth. Let's see if it's gonna be 2.3 or 2.5. Three, two, one. One. Are you kidding me? Hello everybody and welcome back to Coin Shortage Hunting. That of course being the series where I hunt through 10 rolls of each denomination of coins, pennies, nickels, quarters, and dimes in search of interesting and valuable coins and to just see what's out there and see what we can find. As some of you know, the concept for this series was born out of the coin shortages of 2020 and 2021 where my bank was only allowing me to get 10 rolls of each denomination and I wasn't able to get boxes like I used to. Fortunately, it looks like at least in my area, the coin shortage has finally been lifted and I'm able to once again get boxes. But to be honest with you guys, this has quickly become one of my favorite ways to hunt. It gives you a nice little change of pace and a lot of variety, especially with these customer wrap rolls that we typically get when we do these types of hunts. With all that being said, I'm really excited to get into the rolls today. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. Let's start with a quick pan over. So here are our penny rolls, all of them being customer wrapped. Nickel rolls, nine out of 10 customer wrapped, and then this one single machine wrapped roll right here. Quarters, pretty interesting. We actually have eight customer wrapped and then two machine wrapped. And this one I'm gonna get to in a minute, but you can see there's a bump here. I don't think that's gonna be an American coin. I'm really interested to see what that is. And then the dime's actually very similar, nine customer wrapped and a single machine wrapped. So pretty interesting grouping of coins here. Now let's take a look at what we found very interesting about these. All right, so here's the notes that I wrote myself on these rolls. Let's take a look at these pennies. First of all, yeah, there's a lot of copper. There's one unreadable ender here, and I think that that's gonna be this one right here. Yeah, this is a really weird coin. I don't know what this is gonna be. I think that this is Lincoln's head. Uh, but it's really hard to tell because there's basically nothing going on with this coin. I can see part of a date right there, 19 something, but we'll have to flip that over to see if it's a wheat penny or not. Uh, we got a nice older looking 1960 ender right here. It's not the most interesting thing in the world. It's not like uh, rare or anything, but it is kind of cool and something to start us off on. Hopefully the sign of having a lot of copper is gonna mean a lot of wheat pennies in the rolls. Uh, this is the nickel roll that we found interesting. That's that older looking ender right there. Uh, who knows, that might just be a 1960s. We do know that we also have a 1964 on this end. And if you didn't know, 1964 is actually the most common year uh, for nickels. So these aren't really worth anything over face value. As far as the quarters go, we got two new, brand new 2021s. And it looks like these are gonna be Philadelphia's. There's actually a pretty cool error to look for on these. So I'll uh, show you guys that once we get to the quarters. And then it's weird because I was just mentioning this before we started filming. I didn't write it down in my initial report, but there's definitely something here. You can see that bulging out. I think we might just have to open this one first because I'm really interested to see what that is. Of course, we won't be going into today's hunt blind. We'll be using the Quinn's Coin coin roll hunting placemats to aid us in our hunt and help us figure out what to look for in each one of these denominations. We have penny, nickel, and silver stacking placemats all available at quinzcoins.com and I'll put links down in the description below in case you want to pick these up for yourself. With all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's hunt. So like I said earlier, I was originally planning on starting off with pennies or nickels because we had some promising enders there. But this is really intriguing me. There's a massive bump right here. You can kind of see it showing up on camera, but I really want to see what this is live with you guys. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open this one first, and then I guess we're just going to start with the quarters. So uh, if you were hoping that we would start with quarters, you it is your lucky day. Let's go ahead and just dump this out here and uh, see if we can get to that weird coin. And right off the bat, guys, I'm already seeing a silvery looking edge. Now, I don't think that's actually gonna be silver. It looks more like a Canadian to me. I don't think this is the weird coin though. We're not there yet. So this kind of looks like this to me. Uh, it's a little bit shinier, but I could be wrong and I definitely hope I am wrong because I would love to see a silver coin come out here. Let's go ahead and reveal this now. All right, so yeah, that is definitely a Canadian quarter. I'm just gonna put this back down here and we can take a look at that real quick. You see a lot more of these in customer wrapped rolls. They seem to make their way into them more often. Uh, that is a 1988 Canadian quarter. No silver in that, unfortunately, but still a pretty cool thing to find. So I will put that to the side and uh, let's just keep going with this roll and uh, we'll get to that uh, weird coin pretty soon here. I think it's actually blocking the rest of these coins from falling out. You can see those all just look like uh, clad uh, American coins. And then I think, look at this guys, it's coming out right now. What in the world is that? So that is a, it looks like 1975 Netherlands. So that would be the Netherlands. It's very light. It's a little bit bigger than a regular quarter. 
obviously, because it was uh, blocking up the roll there. Oh, it's not 75, it's actually 73. One, is that a G or a C? I cannot tell. I will go ahead and put some information on this coin up on the screen now, as well as a conversion to US dollars, uh, as far as how much this is worth. Uh, this is definitely a first for me, an interesting one to come out here. I don't know if that's going to be worth more than a quarter or not, but it's still a really cool coin to see uh, come out in an American roll. Let's put that one to the side now, and uh, we'll just see if there's going to be anything else interesting coming out of this quarter roll. So let's go ahead and push them out here. Any more uh, Canadians showing up? Mm, doesn't look like it. So the rest of that looks like it's just going to be uh, regular American flag quarters. We will take a look at those uh, in a second here. So actually what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and open one of these uh, machine wrapped rolls. Two, both of the machine wrapped rolls have 2021 Philadelphia Enders. So uh, we're gonna take a look at those because this is actually the first time that I have seen one of those in circulation. So I'm interested to see uh, what this is gonna look like and I can show you guys as well. And wow, okay. Look at that guys, lots of nice shiny coins right there. I'm guessing that a lot of these are gonna be 2019s, 2020s and we may have a chance at uh, finding a West Point. Although now that I think about it, actually a lot of these are probably gonna be 2021s. <laughs> yeah, I was right. So th these basically just came out uh, when I picked up these rolls and uh, they've made their way into circulation. So let me flip this over to the backside here. And basically what you wanna be looking for on this coin is I don't actually know what the, the error is called, but um, it's basically like this weird, um, like blockage up on the top of Washington's head there. And I think they call it the crown error. I'll go ahead and throw a picture up so you guys can see it. Uh, it's very easy to see. So it's the kind of thing that I like to be on the lookout for. I don't like looking for, you know, super intricate, really, really detailed stuff. Um, I like looking for the ones that are super obvious. So anybody can, can look for these types of errors. Uh, I don't see it on this one, but um, it's definitely something to be looking out for. And as far as I know, it's only on the Philadelphia coins. So you can see that little P over there on the right-hand side of Washington. All right, there we go. Just a few coins later, and we are able to snag a 2009. I like to pull these out. The 2009, sort of in the area of 2009, 2010, up through 2012, are uh, a little bit more difficult to find. So I do like to pull those out. We also have a 2020 showing up for us here, so we can check that for a West Point. Uh, unfortunately, in 2021, they did not continue putting, uh, they, they didn't continue making uh, coins in the West Point uh, mint. So we're not gonna be seeing any 2021 West Points. But uh, yeah, we can just keep looking for this air. There's plenty of 2021s here. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys like this new design. I definitely like it. I think it looks really cool. And uh, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference, I think, between um, Washington here and then uh, the older style ones. So there's a 97. Yeah, a little bit of a difference. Not too much though. They kind of return to the old style. I really like this coin. So I'm, I'm happy with 2021 so far. Let's go ahead and just open up that last machine wrapped roll and uh, see if we're gonna get anything interesting, anything silvery looking. And uh, if not, then we'll just go ahead and get onto the next roll. But yeah, here we go into the uh, second machine wrapped roll. Looks like we're gonna get a whole bunch more 2021s. Man, I, I, I don't know. I kind of miss uh, seeing the shiners and then just knowing that you're gonna get a 2020 or a 2019. Now we have the 2021s in the mix, so it's gonna be a little bit uh, interesting here. All of these have been Philadelphia so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, oh, there we go. We got a, another bicentennial uh, right there, so I'll put that one to the side. But yeah, I'll look through these and uh, let you guys know if we get anything, and uh, if not, I'll see you on the next time that we do. All right, guys, we're a little over halfway through the quarters, and I thought this was really crazy. I just wanted to show you, in the last few rolls, look at the amount of bicentennials that have come out. Whoever turned these in, it looked, they had a way higher than normal uh, amount of bicentennials in their quarters, and there's another one coming out. I think the last roll I had had about four or five of them. Uh, the good thing about these coins in particular here is that we haven't seen any 2021, so that's another good thing about customer wrapped rolls is a lot of times they were wrapped a long time ago or the coins that they have were accumulated a while ago, so there's not gonna be too many newer coins and you have more of a chance at finding some of the older stuff. Uh, here we have a 2011. I am still pulling out all 2011s and 2010s. I'm not even sure if I have this in my CoinQuest series yet, uh, but look at this, guys. We were also able to get a Chickasaw and then a 2010. This is actually one of the hardest years to find things in. 2010 Yellowstone right there. Pretty cool to see come out. Uh, in one of the previous rolls, we actually got this one right here, which looks like it was dug out of the ground and then turned in. 
And uh, let's just go ahead and go through the rest of this one and see what else uh, comes out for us here. I'm guessing that there's probably going to be another bicentennial in here somewhere because that's definitely been the trend over the last few rolls. Oh, well, maybe not. We're getting down to the end of it now and I'm not seeing anything. All right, so we have three more rolls to go. I'm going to open one more here just on camera to see if that brings us any luck because that first roll that we were uh, into was definitely had quite a few interesting coins and I haven't seen any Canadian or foreign since, so maybe we'll get one if we uh, use the camera here. Yeah, a lot of these are looking older and look at that, guys. We just got something else right there towards the end. It's 1960. Now, if that were a quarter, that would be silver. That's one of the oldest coins that I've ever found uh, quarter hunting, although it does look foreign to me. So what is this one going to be? So another foreign coin. This one a little bit closer to the size of a quarter, I'd say. And it looks like 1961 franc. So I will put up the conversion rate on that as well. I don't think this is going to be a silver coin, unfortunately. Republic Francais. So this must be a French. It, it may be a French coin. I'm not uh, entirely sure. Look at that writing down there on the bottom. That almost looks engraved. What does that say? O R O T Y. I'm not sure, but this is definitely an interesting looking coin. Uh, I think that I was gonna say it looks like there's a bunch of like die cracks or something uh, going on behind the the uh, figure on this coin, but it looks like maybe just a, a really faint sunrise. Wow. This is cool. This is another one of the reasons I love getting customer wrapped rolls. 1960, I'm not even going to try with uh, the words around the edge there, but uh, that is really cool. And it looks like the camera did bring us some luck, so I'm happy about that. Oh, guys, what in the world do we have here? So another interesting roll. That on that right hand side actually looks like a nickel, which would be kind of disappointing unless it's a buffalo nickel or something like that. Uh, but I also see that we have a silvery looking edge right there, sort of in the middle of the roll. Uh, I think that's going to be Canadian. Let's just pull that out and check real quick. So yep, that is Canadian. Ooh, but look at that guys. It's a 1968. So actually, if you take a look at the placemat right here, you see that Pre-1968 and some 1968 quarters are silver. So we're going to be checking that one in just a second to see if we got a silver one right there. First of all, though, let's pull this out and see what this is going to be. It looks like a nickel, and it's a Canadian nickel. What in the world? Let's take a look at this. So th there is no uh, silver Canadian nickels. That is definitely the last thing I would have expected to find in an American roll of quarters, though. Very interesting. Let's flip this over and see what the year is going to be on it. Oh, okay, 1977, so that makes this a 99.9% .9 nickel nickel, if you can believe that. Uh, some people may not know this, but nickels haven't been made out of pure nickel like this in quite a while. As a matter of fact, I don't think they were ever made out of pure nickel in the U.S., but in Canada they were. Back, I think, pre-1982 uh, is 99.9% .9 nickel. Now, this is actually a pretty interesting coin to find. Usually when I find Canadian nickels, obviously they're in the nickel rolls, but uh, you don't usually find them pre-82, so definitely a nice one to find right there, even though it is just a nickel, and yeah, I did lose about 18 or 19 cents on this. Uh, I'm still happy to have that. Now, I'm going to have to go get a magnet because this is actually one of the few times where you can test if it's silver just based on whether it's magnetic or not. If it's magnetic, it is not silver. If it doesn't stick to the magnet, then it is silver, and I believe it's 50%. So let me go grab the magnet, and we'll do the test. All right, I got the magnet. Here we go, moment of truth. If it sticks to the magnet, it's not silver. If it doesn't stick to the magnet, it is silver. Three, two, one. Oh, man, okay, so this is not going to be silver. I think this is probably the third 1968 that I've been able to find. Pretty much everybody who hunts quarters already knows this, and I think they're probably doing the exact same thing. Although I think this is the only one that I've found that isn't just scratched to death. For some reason, every time I find a 1968, somebody has just like taken some piece of wire and just scratched the heck out of the backside of this coin. I don't know why they do that. Probably to mark that uh, it's not silver. Unfortunately, this one isn't, but still kind of an interesting trip. 
uh, to see if we had a silver there. And uh, that's, the, the placemat here does help you identify that as well. Of course, you have to know uh, to use the magnet test. And it's pretty much one of the only times where the magnet test is valid. But anyways, guys, we have some more coins to look at here. So I'm going to look through these and let you know if I find anything good. All right, nothing else in that last roll. We are down to our last quarter roll now. Let's see if we can open it up this way. I like when the seam comes off like this because it makes it a lot easier to uh, take a look at. Now, what in the world is that right there in the middle? <laughs> wow, that is a corroded coin. Green usually means copper, so probably not going to be anything uh, that we're really interested in, but I am curious to see what's going on. So it's basically just on that edge, it looks like, and it is a, a copper coin, although that corrosion has uh, blocked the date, so we can't see it. But yeah, I'm not seeing anything uh, crazy sticking out in this roll. I did see a few uh, 2019s and 2020s in that last roll, so we had some chances for... Uh, West Point coins, but I didn't see any come out. It is nice though to see some of the 2019s and 2020s that I don't see very often. Uh, so that is a, a good sign. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep going here and see if we can find anything and I'll let you know. All right, guys, that is going to do it for the quarters. Nothing else in that last roll. So I will dump the coins now and uh, we will retire the silver stacking placemat, at least for now, until we come back to the dimes and I'll grab the uh, penny hunting placemat and we will get into our first penny roll So the first one I want to take a look at is the one that is unidentifiable And uh, I just want to quickly see you can see guys look at these edges by the way There's tons of copper in here and I kind of suspected that based on the enders But yeah, let's take a look at this one and see if it's gonna be a wheat penny and eh, it looks like it's not It's just gonna be a memorial, but that is the front side Okay, now that I see it in a little better lighting, it looks like a 1970-something and maybe a Denver mint mark there. But uh, that's not going to be very interesting for us, so we will just kind of move on here. Once again, really nice seam on this coin. Some really disgusting stuff in the roll, unfortunately, but uh, that's why we wear gloves, so that we don't have to touch that. So we'll just dump it out here and uh, take a look, see if we can find any wheat pennies, anything older. Looks like I threw the roll down before uh, making sure that all of the coins were out of it. I'll, I'll grab that later. Uh, but over here, I'm seeing something right off the bat, guys. This is a Canadian coin. Uh, not super old, but uh, definitely probably 60s or 70s. Flip it over to see what the year is. Yep, 1969, so that's a copper penny right there. Uh, guys, let me know down in the comments below if you are holding on to your copper pennies. I saw recently that uh, just checking the price of copper, each copper penny is actually worth about three cents in copper at the moment. Now, that doesn't mean that you're gonna be getting uh, that price for it, but uh, that's what it would be if you were to melt it down, which is illegal, so don't do that. But if you were to melt it down, then you know, it'd be worth uh, three cents per coin. So kind of interesting to see that. Uh, here we have a 1959. And it's, uh, that's unfortunately right after the wheat penny, so it's not going to be a wheat penny. Um, but yeah, we'll just keep going here. Lots of older looking copper, some early 60s. Still no wheat pennies though, so we'll keep going here and see if we can get one. Look at all this. A whole bunch of 60s right in a row, but no wheat pennies yet. Come on. we got to find something here. I love that older, that dark looking copper uh, look that a lot of these coins have. Of course, a bunch of them are in the 60s. This has got to be over 50% copper right here. And uh, if I were to keep collecting copper, I think I would probably uh, not be able to store it for much longer because uh, I have a good amount of it and uh, it takes up a lot of space and it's very heavy. <laughs> but uh, if you guys uh, collect copper, I know you're probably like, why don't you collect it, Quinn? Why don't you just give that to me? Well, look at this, guys. Unbelievable amount of copper here. There's a 1960. That's that uh, ender that we were looking at. This looks to be a large date. And look at that. Right under the 1960, we got our first wheat cent. Wouldn't it be crazy if there was another one under that? All right, so that is going to be a 1954. I'll put it right there and zoom in so you can take a better look at that. 1954 Denver. Awesome. Our first wheat penny, really nice condition on that one as well. So we'll put that to the side. Hopefully there's gonna be more uh, in this roll. So we'll dump it out here and take a look. Yeah, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of wheat pennies in here. There's just so many opportunities with all this copper. All right, let's keep going here and see what we can find. Even the 70s look older, it's crazy. All right, not seeing anything else in this roll, unfortunately. Haven't seen anything yet. I thought we had uh, 
thought something looked like an error right there, but it was just a hair. Another good reason to be wearing the gloves. All right, so I think that's uh, I think that's gonna be it for that roll. We'll do one more live here and uh, see if we can find anything. One thing I've noticed though on these rolls, all of them are pretty much different. I mean, you have this style right here, which I don't think we've seen yet. You have the red ones, and then there's this one right here as well. Kind of interesting. So yeah, we'll just keep going here. Open one more roll live. Once again, with all that copper showing, very nice sign. Wow. Look at the color, guys. Not a single new coin in there. Let's uh, take a look and see what we can get here. Unfortunately, even though we have a lot of copper, I'm just not seeing a lot of wheat pennies, which is crazy. Somebody must have uh, looked through these already and got, I don't know, it looks like somebody almost turned in their copper collection here, but took out all the wheat pennies. <laughs> That's crazy. No wheats, no wheats. All copper, no wheats. Actually, I don't think that one's copper. That's an 80, 85, 83. All right, guys, it looks like that is going to do it for the first three rolls. We got a single wheat penny out of there. I'll get on to the next ones and let you know what I find. All right, there we go. We got another Canadian coming out for us here. This one actually looks a lot nicer than the last one. Some nice luster left on that coin. And that one's gonna be a 75. So that's two Canadians so far. Ooh, I think we got another Canadian right here. This might be older, let's take a look. Ah, 72. A lot of these coins are looking way older than they actually are. But I'm still happy with that. I'll, I'll take a 72 Canadian. Let's see what else we got here. So this one is probably zinc. It's not looking like it's in great shape. And let's just keep moving here. I'd really love to pull a steel scent out of here one day. I know that that's a lot easier to do uh, when you have customer wrapped rolls like we have. So that'd be nice to see come out at some point. We have it over here on the placemat. I've just never been able to find one. And I know some of you have though. A lot of the people that follow me let me know. You kind of rub it in my face. But guys, we have five more rolls of pennies to go. Still that single wheat scent, a few Canadians, but uh, that's about it. So we'll see what we can find. Oh guys. All right, we just opened a third to last roll. I see something very interesting right off the bat and it's not American. Take a look at this. Okay, so there we go. We got a young head Canadian penny right there. I thought it was gonna be a King George VI for a second, but uh, I have a feeling this might actually be one of the older ones. So I believe these went from 1950, either 52 or 53 up through 64. Let's flip this over and see what we have for a date, guys. Three, two, one, yes! much older. I think this may be the first year. I'm gonna have to consult my Canadian book again, which I had out for that uh, Canadian quarter that we were looking at earlier. This is a 1953 young head Canadian penny. That is so, so cool. One year earlier, I believe it would have been a King George VI, but I think this might even be better than that because some of these are much more rare. Uh, like if you find them in the 60s, those are pretty common. 50s, not so much. So this is an awesome find. All right, guys, check this out. So I was correct that the Elizabeth II, this is the first year that she appeared on a Canadian penny, 1953. And uh, we'll flip this over here to take a look at the mintage figures. So you can see they're all listed right here. 1953 had a pretty high mintage compared to 54 and 55. I believe 54 is actually the lowest mintage, but this is the first year that she appeared on uh, the penny. It's hard to believe she's still queen, just unbelievable. But uh, I am very happy to have that first year coin right there. I don't know, I, I believe that there was a slight design change somewhere in the middle of this series, which, gives, which gave this away as an earlier year uh, for me. I just, I had that image in my head. I couldn't tell you what it is though, uh, but that is an awesome find. Uh, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and get into the rest of these. All right, guys, we are getting into our last roll now. That second to last one didn't really have much in it other than a few more uh, Canadians, but uh, they weren't older, they're newer. I'll show you everything that I uh, was able to get out of these rolls. Some of it I didn't show on camera, so I'll show it at the end here. Let's just go through this very last roll here, see if we're gonna find any wheat pennies other than the single uh, one wheat penny that we have so far. And then arguably more impressive, the uh, young head Canadian penny that we found, which was a really, really cool find. But yeah, so that is it for the pennies. Now I think we're gonna go ahead and get into some nickels. So if you watch the channel a lot, you know that nickels are definitely my favorite coin to hunt. There's just so much to find. 
all of this stuff. I've actually found V-nickels before, never a shield nickel. Uh, Buffalo nickels actually come out quite uh, occasionally from time to time. Lots of older Jeffersons available and just all this stuff. They, you have a good chance of finding a lot of this stuff on this placemat, including the war nickels, which are 35% silver. So hopefully we can get one of those today because it's been a while since I got one. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the first one. So this is the one that has an older looking ender. This is a 64 on this side, uh, but this side I think might be hopefully older. It's probably honestly just going to end up being a 64 as well. But uh, just in case, let's uh, let's pull it off here and we'll flip it over. I guess we're going to have to flip it over the other way. So let me do it like this and we'll see if we get uh, an older coin here. So three, two, and 62. I'll take it. That's better than 64. Uh, but we don't keep anything unless it's before 1960, so I won't be uh, keeping that one, but still better than a 64, so I'll take it. All right, so there's that 64 ender right there, and uh, we'll just move our way through these real briefly here. I'll check for 2009s a little bit later. Uh, in case you didn't know, you want to be on the lookout for 2009s because it is a low mintage year compared to all of the other coins around it. Uh, so I will be on the lookout for those, but uh, I will do that off camera because it's not the most interesting thing in the world to watch somebody uh, Look really closely at the date of every single nickel in front of them All right, so I guess that roll is kind of a bust We do have this single machine wrapped roll all the rest of them are customer wrapped So I'm interested to see what's in this one uh, and we'll do it live here with all of you on camera so let's uh, take a look here at the edges. That's one thing you want to be on the lookout for if you're looking for the silver war nickels. Sometimes you can identify them by the edges. It's not super easy though. Uh, this one's a little bit darker. Basically what you're looking for is like a dark gray, kind of a dull uh, gray versus you know this shiny silver looking color. Uh, but that one's just going to be a 1977, so no war nickel there. Let's uh, take a look at these and see if we're going to get anything uh, that's a keeper for us. Once again, I will be uh, looking for 2009s a little bit later. Would love to see a buffalo come out for us out of this uh, machine wrapped roll here, but with 10 rolls, it's probably not likely. All right, so there we go. We got a reverse uh, D mint mark right there. That stands for Denver. And uh, since it's on the reverse like that, that means that this coin is at least as old as 1964. Let's flip this over and see if we have a keeper. <laughs> Another 1962. Okay, not too bad. Once again, better than a 64. And uh, we'll get down to the end of this roll now. Not seeing a whole lot going on here though, so I will check these for 2009s and I'll let you know if I find anything good. All right guys, we are about halfway through and it looks like we finally just got our first find. It seems like whoever turned these in was a fan of nickel hunting because they seem to have picked them clean. Other than this one right here so far, 1956, so that's pre-60s, so we'll keep that. Flip it over to the reverse to see if there's a mint mark, and I don't see one over there on the right-hand side of the Monticello. So that is our first find, 1956. Let's see if this roll has any others for us. Haven't even been able to find a 2009 yet either. Of course, that's not something that's very easy to do. You usually only, only find about one per box, and this is just one-fifth of one box, so... That's probably not going to happen, but you never know. So we'll keep keep on hunting here. We have about five more rolls to go, but that is the end of that one. So we'll get on to the next. Looks like we have about three rolls left. That's really disgusting. But under that, it looks like we may have an older one here. I'm just going based off of the look of it. I mean, there is a D there. It would be nicer if there was an S. Uh, but let's flip this over and see if we got a pre-60s here. Three, two, one. There we go. 1958 Denver. Not the most desirable coin, still pretty common, even though it is pre-60s, but uh, I will be holding on to that one. And that, oh my gosh, that is so gross. Thank God for the gloves. I feel like I say that about three times every episode, but it's true. You need to have gloves if you're coin roll hunting because this stuff comes up way more than you would think. And uh, coins are pretty dirty. They're, they're pretty nasty. They've been through a lot of people's hands. They've been through kids' hands, which is, ugh. All right, so we'll get on to the next one, guys. We got three more rolls to go. All right, guys, we just opened up the very next roll, almost all the way through it now, and I think we just got another oldie here. So let's take a look at that one. Yeah, that's definitely looking older. I'm not seeing a mint mark, but it definitely has that look to it. I think this is going to be pre 60s. Let's see what we have in three, two, one. There we go, 1941, just about as old as a Jefferson nickel can be. This one, of course, is going to be fairly common, the 41 Philadelphia. 
Uh, not much there, but still a interesting find to pull out. We got three keepers so far and two more rolls to go. Let's just go ahead and open them live. What the heck? Maybe the camera will bring us some luck and we'll pull out a buffalo nickel. All right, let's get into our second to last roll. Man, I love it when they come apart like that. That makes it so much easier to check for war nickels. I don't see any on that one, though. Sometimes, though, the war nickels show up even without having that dark edge, so... You never know. I actually had one one time that was polished, so it looked like a brand new coin from the edge. And then when you actually took a look at it, it was a war nickel, which was a nice little surprise. This one looks like it could be older. We'll take a look at that. Oh, dropped it. Let's try that one more time. 64, okay. So we'll put that one back. Uh, once again, I'm gonna try to keep these separate from the last roll we looked through because I'm gonna check these all for 2009s. So I don't see much going on in that roll. I'll check them a little bit later and let's take a look at this last roll to see if we can find anything on the last roll. Come on, silver. Let's see what we can get here. Oh, actually, that actually has the look of a silver. You can see it's a little bit darker. Here, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up so you can see. Yeah, that could be silver. Let's take a look at that one right there. Ah, nope, it's gonna be actually pretty new, so that's a bummer. But look at that, guys, right off the bat, we have a 1940 showing up, so that is even older than the one we found a little earlier. Let's flip that over to see what the mint mark is. No mint marks, so also pretty common with the Philadelphia there. Here's a reverse D. Let's uh, flip this one over and it's a 64, so we will move on. And I'm not seeing any buffaloes, so that's too bad, but uh, hey, it's to be expected. Like I said, we only have one-fifth of one box today. I will check the rest of these guys, but it looks like that's going to be about it for the nickels. Okay, so it looks like that was it for the nickels. Now we're moving on to dimes, so we're going to bring back the silver stacking placemat, this time focusing here up on the dimes. And uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go into the machine wrapped roll first to see if that brings us any luck. And uh, of course it is a little bit better for the camera as well because it's much easier to get into. Now that one actually fooled me when I first saw it. I thought that might be silver, but it's just a 1990. Uh, so we'll be able to tell if it's silver or not based on the edges for sure. Uh, so let's take a look at the edges here and see what we see. Yeah, I'm not seeing much there. A lot of shinies, a lot of nice shiny ones though. So maybe we have some new 2021s. Uh, there's not a whole lot as far as I know to be looking out for in dimes. I look for the 2009s of course because like all of the other coins that is a lower mintage uh, year. This is a, a, in fact going to be a brand new 2021 Philadelphia so we got a few of those here in this roll just like we have with the quarters. And uh, other than that I really don't know. Uh, I basically just look for silver 2009s. And that's about it. So that's why dimes usually go last, because there's not a whole lot, in my opinion, to be looking at, uh, especially once you've already checked for silver. So I'll keep going through these dimes, and uh, I'll let you know if I find anything. Hopefully we can get a silver out, because we weren't able to do it in the quarters or the nickels yet. Oh, guys. I think we might have a silver. I was looking at this edge, you can see it's a little bit darker right there. And uh, it looks a lot more uniform than the ones around it. Now I thought that might just be a dirty clag coin, but I just took a look at it and I think this is gonna be silver, look at this. Oh, that definitely looks silver, guys. Thank God for dimes, I usually don't like them, but Today they are treating me well. Oh my gosh, guys, let's pull this one out here. Let me just remove some of the other coins here so that we can get to it a little bit better. Oh, this might this might even be older too. I saw that it was definitely a Roosevelt, but uh, hopefully it's older than a 64 because that's usually what comes out if you do find silver. Okay, <laughs> this is awesome, guys. Let's pull this one out and see what it's gonna be. All right, there it is. There might be more in there, so I will keep that uh, as a possibility. Let's flip it to the reverse first. Yeah, that is definitely a silver dime. Not seeing a mint mark. If you were to see a mint mark, it would be down there, uh, basically in that open spot right above the E in one. So we don't have a mint mark on this coin, but let's see what the year is gonna be, guys. Three, two, one. Oh man, what is it? 1980? Huh? That doesn't make sense. 
This looks silver, doesn't it? And it's got a D on it. Come on. Are you kidding me? This is not silver? You gotta be kidding me. This has to be silver. All right, let me do some research. I gotta figure this one out. I don't know, there, there, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I looked this up, I couldn't find anything on a 1980 Denver silver dime, so I have to go with this not being silver, but I just don't understand it. It certainly looks silver from the edge, it looks silver from the reverse and the obverse. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Let me know down in the comments below what you think is going on with this one. I'll hold on to it just in case, but I don't think it's going to be silver, so that's a bummer. Oh, guys. Ah, never mind. I thought we had something there. That one in the middle really looks interesting, but I think it's just has a it's just missing uh part of its copper edge. Yeah, look at that. It's it's just worn down. Uh, one year off, 1965. Guys, I'm still stuck on that last 1980 Denver that we found earlier. This is actually our last roll of dimes right here, uh, and I haven't been able to find anything since. I did, though, think of a way that we could, a surefire way to tell if it's silver or not is to weigh it, because uh, a silver dime has a different weight than a clad dime. So I'm gonna do that after we go through the rest of these uh, dimes right here, make sure we don't have any 2009s. This one's also very shiny. I wanna take a look at this one real quick. Wow, 2012 Denver. Really nice looking coin right there. I think I'll hold on to that one, cause that is, that's almost proof-like. All right. So we got at least one interesting find. Uh, this obviously is still very interesting to me. How can that not be silver? My next theory now that I was going through these dimes, I was thinking maybe it's silver plated, right? Because th th that happens from time to time. People plate coins and it uh, confuses the heck out of other people. Um, so we're gonna find out for sure in a minute here uh, once I weigh that coin. But first I'm gonna go through the rest of these and see if I can get anything. All right guys, so here's the test. Up here we have a regular clad dime which should weigh about 2.27 grams. Here we have what I believe to potentially be a silver dime even though it was minted in 1980. So let's go ahead and first weigh the clad dime to make sure that the scale is working. And right there we see about 2.2, 2.3 grams. So that is in line with a clad dime. Now for the moment of truth. Here we have potentially a silver dime. It sure looks silver, it looks silver to me. It looks silver from that side. Just when you flip it over to this side, you see the 1980 and you think there's no possible way. So this is the moment of truth. Let's see if it's gonna be 2.3 or 2.5. 2.5 for silver, guys. Here we go. Three, two, one. 2.4. 2.4. Are you kidding me? Okay, either this is plated, which would give it a little bit of extra weight, or this is actually a silver dime, which I don't, I don't think that that even exists. It shouldn't exist. Okay, let me try this one more time with a coin that I know to be silver. So this right here is a mercury dime. I've never been able to find one of these uh, while coin roll hunting. I have found a couple while metal detecting though, so uh, I think I have better luck over there as far as silver dimes go. But let's take a look. Uh, I just restarted the scale to make sure that uh, it's all zeroed out. Now let's put this on the scale here. This should read 2.5, right? Okay, so that's around 2.5. Now let's uh, pull that off and let's put our suspect dime on the scale and see what it reads. 2.4 again. Okay, so that 2.4 is just what's messing with my head. Why is it 2.4? It doesn't make sense. It's in between and it just went down to 2.3. So I think it's leaning towards not silver, but I don't know. I just don't know. So guys, let me know down in the comments below what you think I should do with this coin. It would just be unbelievable if that was a silver planchet, but I, I just... It doesn't make sense to me. All right, so that pretty much marks the end of the hunt. We got a lot out of this one, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, everything we were able to get. So two interesting foreign coins out of the quarters, this one being the 1973 Netherlands coin, and then over here we have that 1960 one franc coin. 
Some pretty interesting stuff right there. We almost had a silver quarter right here with this 1968, and then we were able to get a 1988 as well. The 68 didn't end up being silver, unfortunately. Uh, we got a few 2009s, some 2010s, 2011s. Super weird here. We were able to get a 99.9% .9 nickel, Canadian nickel, but it actually came out of a quarter roll. <laughs> Matter of fact, we didn't get any uh, Canadian nickels in the actual nickel rolls, so pretty interesting there. And then a huge tower right here of the bicentennial quarters, which was really nice to see. As far as pennies goes, we were able to get a single wheat penny out of 10 rolls. This was probably the best find in the pennies though, 1953 Young Head Canadian Penny, actually in pretty good shape as well. And then we got a whole bunch of other Canadian pennies right there. Moving down to the nickels, we got a 1940, 41, 56, 58. And then this one right here I didn't show, but uh, it's got a slight grease error and it actually shows up a little bit on both sides. So that's kind of an interesting one there. And then as far as the dimes go, probably the most controversial coin that we looked at today. Really not a whole lot, a couple of off centers here. Uh, and then we got a really nice looking 2012 Denver. But this is definitely the coin of the day. Probably the one that's gonna be sparking the most conversation. What is going on with this dime? Here, I'll zoom in here so we can get a better look here. So once again, guys, you saw it earlier. It's a 1980D. It looks like it's silver. It really looks like it's silver, and it sort of weighs in between. I don't know what to do with it. Please let me know down in the comments below what you think I should do. And that brings us to the end of today's hunt. Real quickly, guys, just once again, if you're interested in picking up one of these coin roll hunting placemats to aid you in your own coin roll hunting, whether it's a penny roll hunting, nickel roll hunting, or silver stacking with the quarters, dimes, or half dollars, you can head on over to quinscoins.com, and I'll put links down in the description below. And of course, with that being said, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new because I post new videos like this every single week, always bring you along with the hunts and having a good time time and as always I'm Quinn and this is Quinn's Coin signing out and I will see you in the next one.